So welcome back everybody, my name is Paul again and I am making a series about esoteric psychology, esoteric teachings and esoteric philosophy and so on. I've studied a lot of things over the last 45 years. And I'm not considered, a, I don't call myself an expert in any way about anything, I just uh, have a lot of different kinds of experiences that I'd like to share. And uh, some of the things I've put on this board here, I'll be speaking about uh, various terminology. The subject I've been talking about in the last couple of videos is about the avatar system. The avatar system is a concept that um, developed over thousands of years through esoteric teachings, particularly in the Hindu tradition, but also in many parts of the world, where they basically they, they got an idea of the timing, and there was a there's a cycles that are very important in the history of our planet and there's cycles in basically every factor of life. So over the thousands of years, there's various kinds of sages and people who observed and practiced and built buildings and observed the sky and the stars and so on. They came to the conclusion that there's various kinds of cycles and along with those cycles, there's various kinds of energy that comes onto the planet and into our solar system. And then because of that, it allows various kinds of growth and evolution and uh, enlightenment to happen. And in the process, there's a, a system over the ages of thousands of thousands of years. As you imagine, a sage has devoted his whole life to service and so on. He or she wants to express some kindness to humanity and leave something behind. They leave their teachings and they leave whatever they can in their mining of their spiritual mining, you might say. And then we have traditions that people follow. You know, they, they remember for thousands of years sometimes these great beings who said, look, they changed our whole culture. They, the, whatever this person was, I don't know what they're, who they were or where they came from, but they did some amazing stuff while they're here. And the problem is that a lot of times today in various kinds of, you know, concepts and books have been written and, you know, the whole meaning of a lot of these words I'm going to be discussing it completely this is completely fragmented and misunderstood and a lot of these actually there's a great overlap between say the Egyptian cultures and the ancient cultures in the East and the Hindi, Hindu area now and in that area of the world, Indonesia. A lot of the ancient traditions, they just had different terminology, but the spiritually aware and conscious beings in every culture had some understanding of the cosmic system where, I mean, people might call it, in the Christian religion, they call it redemption. Okay, well, a God came and he brought all this love. Well, love is always here. The thing is that there's times that people are not open to it. I mean, you know, if a person comes and teaches, they could talk like to a wall. It's, it's a matter of the timing. There's, usually what happens is in cultures over thousands of years, they just realize that after a while, human beings get so upset and so sad and so, so they just throw up their arms and they just beg, well, I don't know what's going on here, and they just pray in their heart like something happened. Well, there are, there are beings who practice kindness. There's people like for thousands of years, the people who practice kindness, they, their whole goal, like Buddha's goal, was to say, well, I have bliss, but what good is it just me having bliss? I, I need to make sure that all the other beings have bliss, too. So, there are always those kinds of beings over centuries and thousands of years, the incarnations, they get practiced, that they get into the system of eternal service, basically. Because where are we going to go as human beings? I mean... As a human being on this earth, you can mass and you can gather up a whole lot of stuff and have a big huge warehouse full of stuff, whatever, and then one day you just drop your body, then what? <laughs> so what these ancient teachers said, look, you know, there's a, there's a smarter way to live in this life, and there's a whole different purpose of this life, and if you listen to some of the things that I've learned, then, you know, you'll realize that this gift of the human body, you can have all kinds of incredible experiences, and you can learn and understand and get some understanding about your own existence and how you fit in with this ant law of oneness. See, consciousness is eternal. This is a, it's a hard thing for modern society, scientists and people who are hard-headed and, you know, whatever. 
they don't understand that this has been this is no problem. You know, they've talked about consciousness for thousands and thousands of years, the material problem, the the cycles of civilizations has been observed, you see, and wisdom has come down to us in the form of many of these teachers. And the problem is that let's say there was a great teacher like Buddha in one part of the world, then you know that area of the world they, they learn all about that and then but the rest of the world doesn't know anything. <laughs> about that and they have their own teacher and so what happens is this eternal oneness this this infinite day infinite beingness you can say you don't even have to put a name on it the one about nothing can be said the presence is passed on to other beings because it's all about oneness we're all about service we're all about like a, there is basically a cosmic brotherhood it's a literal fact that the cosmos needs to have brotherhood, that it needs to have cooperation, it needs to have the gears all slowing smoothly with flowingness, harmonics. That's what we want, harmonic resonance. Why? Because it brings incredible joy and understanding and creativity. All the great teachers and artists and use geometry. They use color, they use frequency, use a color. Basically they used an inner sense of beauty and harmony that exists at the fundamental level in the cosmos that makes our even the, our body has to have harmony at the cellular level so we can be here. And the oxygen atoms have the all to be like just going on just fine, just smooth. Otherwise we won't be here. So the whole idea a lot of these great beings, as a being gets ascending and, and higher and, and more energy, again, the whole purpose of gathering more energy is not like hoarding like a king. <laughs> I think this word Lord was taken over by the British. <laughs> like, oh, the Lord of this and the Lord of that. But uh, what? There's just an infinite universe, you see. And even in the solar system, there's vast areas. It's like the. the the mercy of that infinite, infinite beingness that you can have more and more bliss forever if you get in this process of eternal service and whatever you, whatever you enjoy and take in, you just give out and express. And it becomes this huge, beautiful dance. That's how the universe works and we're all part of it. So all of these things, I mean, there's a lot of people when they hear some of these words like, oh, a saint or a, an adept or what the hell does that mean? So all these words have been misunderstood over the centuries and have gotten kind of twisted in a lot of ways. And I'm going to go through them a little bit here. Like I said, the whole concept again, I keep going back and forth, is oneness. If we think of just wholeness, it's just one cosmic reality. Then we can start understanding, look, are all our perceptions of division, and all these words and everything are really just part of the whole drama and we're just a player here and we get to expand more the more we get into the service we give the more we give the more we get it's just a natural process nature works like that and we participate in it and then you start going up the elevator of awareness basically it's all about cooperating with the whole rhythm of the cosmos <clears throat> so I had a previous screen in one of the other videos and I made some changes and I added some different words and I want to emphasize a few different things here. One of the things that I forgot to mention was the word Manu. The Manu is also again like a department of civilization you might say. There was a story of the Hindu tradition of Manu who was a, like a Hindu Noah and he got a message that, from a great fish he said <laughs> that uh, the world was going to get flooded and then he established, uh, after the whole catastrophe happened, he was one of the people who organized uh, a whole bunch of other kinds of masters, enlightened beings, or just people who were there, survivors, to reorganize civilization. And the word manuscript, Manu was the civilization laws and, and so on. So that's how that came. There was a Hindu Noah. <coughs> Um, are hot, just like a master, like an adept. There are people who were practiced and maybe someone goes in a cave or 
they have very disciplined practice. <clears throat> Maybe uh, it's their first lifetime in which they do all this intense practice or whatever, but they attain a kind of mastery. Um, and mastery of just self-control, uh, mastering the energy of our own being, our own body, because basically all the energy that we have, um, if we resonate with it, if we, if we get into a rhythm, we start to resonate with the rest of the cosmos. It's all about vibration um, and sympathetic resonance. There are the seven divine rays, which were the seven candles, and the, it's, it's just like there's a lot of symbolism in the seven. There's seven rays and beams and certain colors, you might say, on the cosmic level, and they split out into, you know, man, the whole spectrum of the universe goes from zero frequency to who, whatever, you know, infinite perhaps, you know, so we basically have a subdivision of different rays and frequencies that spread out and divide according to various harmonic laws. <clears throat> um, another word, the Paramahansa, is maybe like a, a lot of times a yogi will be someone who's a mendicant and live out in a you know, forest and maybe just very disciplined, they might be celibate, they might eat very little food and so on. Uh, a Paramahansa is someone who who had just, you know, years or many, maybe many lifetimes as a monk and sadhu, and they are living in a normal, uh, civil, they might have a family, and they might conduct their business in different ways, but they, at the same time, they have an inner realization that is, is one, these are usually one of some of the great teachers, or bodhisattvas, or, or um, these paramahansas. <coughs> Again, I, I emphasize in many of my videos and other things that I've talked about is sound. Um, I heard one of the current teachers in India say that at one time the previous civilization mastered sound, and in our civilization we're doing a lot with light, but sound was a primordial, uh, it, it has to do with substance, and <clears throat> there's, you know, relationships between sound and materials and how how uh, things are assembled into the universe, or things that come out of, out of the soup of the cosmos. You might like cook it, you know, the cosmos is cooking stuff, and at certain temperatures, you might say, or certain frequencies, you might say, you know, certain kinds of forms can develop, you see. So, uh, Rishi, again, you know, some of the, some of the teachers are, are involved in uh, teaching, for example, about a particular subject or maybe the history. They're involved in recording um, certain mantras uh, that are per used by different uh, practices to enhance our car consciousness and improve our health. So there's a lot of these titles, again, that have been misinterpreted and very confusing now, and I'm just going to go over them because the titles, in one way, they don't really matter. You know, they're just sort of <clears throat> people's perceptions. They put a label on it. The original Sanskrit language, and a language like Hebrew, but Sanskrit is very old, uh, had to do with sound. Because when they said, when they designed a word like Om or Mahatma, they used the sounds to say, when you pronounce those words and that sound, it has a particular effect. You understand? That's, it's hard for us to we speak so many words, we just blab and go on and on. But these people who practice this kind of knowledge about mantras and sound learn how to make sounds with their throat <clears throat> and imitate natural sounds and realize that <clears throat> by through the creative use of the voice you can have what they, an invocation. Invocation has to do with using our voice to make sounds to activate or stimulate or even alter different things going on in our environment and we use speech very very subconsciously we talk and talk and you know when we feel a little extra need we put some emotion on our voice we put some maybe some anger or some raise some higher tones or some higher frequencies but subliminally human beings are working with sound on a very subtle level because sound is part of the cosmos it's just innate in us and um, 
the teachers and the great sages of the past and mastered a lot of these mastered sound and were able to teach about sound to many different people. Um, and we have some of their teachings today. It's a very new, I mean, nowadays there's a lot of increased research into the subject of sound. Uh, but again, it's a very deep mystery and the ancient people knew about it. Um, <clears throat> Go through some of the the word Sat Guru means Sat the true guru. A true guru is someone who does the job. I mean basically I'll tell you what, the great great teachers of the world, they know that this life is temporary, that we have no time really, we can't assume any amount of time. So the greatest teachers in the world would say, Okay, when you're ready, I'm ready. It's just like you step from this side to that side and you were done here. Because you know, to make it as simple as possible, it's like go from the outside to the inside. You see, the problem is that a lot of people, human beings, they say, oh, I'll do that tomorrow, or I don't like that idea, or whatever, so they don't listen to some of these great teachers, uh, because if they did, they would be a lot happier and have some profound experiences. But unfortunately, the wandering mind, the human nature is just so distracted that we don't realize that if we just relax and went inside a little bit and go from the outside to the inside, that we would start to have some profound understandings about everything, about downloads of consciousness, because we need all of us need to take a chance now and then to relax into our own being. Because beyond our physical eyes and seeing and hearing and all those senses, there's an awareness that if we look at the, if we just feel our own awareness is a conglomeration of all our senses, all our feelings, all our imaginations, and all of that, all of that is just one perceiving being, one I, you might say. If we are seeing, we are perceiving simultaneously seeing the outside and the inside. That's the whole goal, so that I use this example sometimes of how, let's say you're riding in a car and the windows are closed and you can't see anything about the outside, you just don't feel anything, no wind or anything. And then if you roll the windows down, you start to feel a little bit about the outside. And so you get a sense of, hey, you know, you're sort of in this car, but then if you get a convertible, you have the top off and you're in the car moving, but you're also outside and fully aware. So in a way, we have to bridge the whole idea of aware, advancing awareness is to build a bridge for, through the various different levels of our own awareness so that it's like taking the top off our convertible. So we're here in this world doing all our activities and all that stuff, but we're also consciously, simultaneously aware of a lot of other things that are going on, a lot of other subtleties and a lot of feelings and a lot. Of it's all about having a steady mind because it's like you know, if you're trying to catch something, and if you have a little bucket and you just like, okay, I'm going to try to catch, a, let's say it's raining gold and you have like a little tiny bucket, and you say, okay, I'm going to run out and catch a few things. Now, if it's raining gold, then I'll tell you what, just spread out <laughs> as many things as you can get. The same way with, if, if, if there's consciousness, is like our psychic gold, it, it can just rain in from inside us and enlighten us. We need to hold out our understanding and hold out our, our little pan, you might say, to catch some of that amazing experience and amazing understanding and growth of consciousness. Because, again, you know, all the beings, you know, these are all confusing. I don't even want to talk about some of these names and stuff and because they say it's so confused. If you say the word angel to somebody, they go, oh my God, you know, they have concept of an angel, you know, and it gets to be a little bit silly. The word Deva means angel also, and there's Devi, which is the feminine, and then there's the Elohim, which is supposedly the, like the supreme angels or the spirits before the throne or the divine rays or the whatever. All of that in some ways is irrelevant because what we personally need to do is just expand into our own oneness and feel a sense of being and participate in this act of service in the, in the cosmos because that's how we get bliss. You know, a lot of people ask about how do you get happy. And how, it, a lot of these teachers, I mean, they really come down to just 
he is simple. When you're ready to listen, listen. But when you're ready to listen, you'll find out it's really simple. Go from the outside to the inside. Do a little kindness to others, a little bit of service to others. Participate in the cosmos. Be creative. You start to flow that way. It's so simple, but we make it complicated. So a lot of these things, again, I want to remember, like cycles, sound. There's cycles of times when the planet is participating in these cycles, too. You see, we forget. We just go about our little lives, and we're worried about our own little personal cycles. But in the big cosmos, in the sun's life, in the planet's life, there's events also where you know a whole lot of energy is brought to, together and I am really I really believe that because of all the opportunity now we have the seven billion people on the earth because they say okay now's the time to have a body go out and do something realize expand participate if you don't want to do that well you know maybe you won't get a good body for a while but we're here and I encourage people to study some of this because there's a lot of people who listen to videos like mine and others who are just really, 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 really highly developed. It's just taking the mask off, dropping off, and, and personality is fine. You know, it's okay to have a personality and an active. It's just like when the end of the day, you know, you take off your costume. You know, if you're an actor, you just take it all off and you sit. Same way with meditation, like the way that all these beings got their authority or they got their respect from others is because they taught and they brought something practical. They didn't just say words, they brought some experience to help each of us expand our own awareness. And they may have had a discipline. Some of these people, you know, they disciplined from a very, very early age. And we just be grateful to them because they brought us some tremendous understandings from our own existence and I that's where gratitude and prayer you might say comes from because eventually people realize well you know this life is a gift these guys I can have an incredible experience every single day and not only that but I can transmit it to other people and I can create and even participate in in the greater cosmos and find my place in this system here you see so I encourage people to read some of the books. I'll go through a few real quickly here. The Gods of the Egyptians. <clears throat> this guy here, I'll look at that. And uh, he wrote another one. This is volume two. I didn't read all of them all. I referred to these. I looked through them sometimes. And just, the ancients had different terminology. They just, sometimes we don't understand the hieroglyphics of the Egyptians. They think it's some kind of a re weird religion. Well, religion... Real religion is science because it's the science of the cosmos. It's like the science of our own beingness, okay? That's a real religion. It's supposed to be accurate knowledge and information to help us have a practical experience, not just some theory and belief. <clears> the <throat> esoteric writings of Blavatsky. This is kind of a summarized version of theosophy. Um, there's, you know, a lot of concepts and stuff in there, these books, because, you know, they're ancient traditions and so on. They have different labels and different titles for different things but uh, again Thoth, uh, ancient Thoth was from Egypt and he wrote the, the emerald uh, tablets and just profound information about the cosmos and the psyche and everything and he again all these beings all of us as soon as we learn something we try to convey it onward so that all the beings could be happy <laughs> and enjoy the expansion of awareness so I appreciate people watching. I've made a lot of videos, so I'm going to probably go on to another uh, subject for a while. But I appreciate the feedback I've been getting, and even though a lot of people don't watch it right now, um, it just is a one-to-one -one person kind of thing, and we affect each other in different ways, and we can always like and share and <laughs> pass uh, any information around. So appreciate you listening, and thanks again.